Hello everybody. This is Jason with Green Acres Pest Control. Good to see everybody here tonight. I'm early. I'm early. Early, early, early by like an hour, hour and a half. It's fantastic. Hope everybody's doing all right tonight. Hope everybody's having a good night. Um, so wanted to go over a couple of things tonight. I have a members only section of my website now on YouTube. It's not a whole lot, but uh, just for those that like to donate, I do have some people that like to. I've got a few members now. Um, if you go to youtube.com slash greenacrespc, which of course the URL is up there, uh, but if you go down on my YouTube, uh, where you can click the subscribe button, which, which I, I reckon, recommend you do that anyway, because that's free. But if you click join, you can actually join by signing into YouTube, and you can join my channel. And you can get posts from the community tab over here, different things that I've got, um, you know, access to. I haven't done any live members only live streams or anything like that yet. Uh, I just don't have time this time of year. Maybe a couple months I'll have some more time to be able to do something like that. But hey, Kenju, you ain't got, yeah, I told you I, I turned that members thing on so you don't have to donate every single stream. Kenju comes in here. He was my first member. He's got a little star. So if you notice how Kenju's got a little star next to his name, that shows that he's a member of the chat, of the, of the YouTube, like I'm just talking about just now. He's a member. And so uh, he comes in every night. He's always here whenever I live stream hanging out with everybody, talking and stuff, so, but, uh, but anyway, I just wanted to mention that, I don't mention, I don't self-promote myself very much at all, I also have an Amazon page, that link's in the description as well, shows you how to, you know, what to buy, how to kill bugs, yeah, I've got bed bugs right here, I got cockroaches, carpet beetles, lice, all kinds of stuff here, that I recommend for the control of all kinds of pests, so, hopefully you guys can find what you need while you're here, hopefully what I do helps, so, um, anyway, we all want to talk about tonight. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I just emptied my coffee, and now I'm sad. Because you like, you take the lid off, and you make sure it's all gone, because you have to look just to make sure you didn't miss a little bitty drop, and it's all gone. I came across chimney swift bugs for the first time three days ago, regular GHP treatment, and saw a bed bug in the kitchen sink, red flag, and unusual. Eventual worked it out, however. Yes, chimney swift bugs look just like bed bugs, except they attack birds. So, um, Crossfire is labeled for um, bed bug breeds, which would include chimney swift bugs. Uh, I have encountered chimney swifts before, many times. Um, people call me a lot locally for bed bug work, and so I go out and I find chimney swift bugs a lot. Um, also, bat bugs. I actually find bed bugs, um, bat bugs more often than chimney swift bugs, but they are around. So, maybe two or three times I've found them re recently. But, um, but yes, I have seen them. A lot of times, they will get into houses... What in the world? You Something wanted to update on my computer. Sorry about that, everybody. Anybody wearing headphones or anything, I don't want to blow your eardrums. Um, but anyway, I have run into chimney swift bugs before. Um, it's rare, but it does happen. Uh, chimney swifts, which, of course, by the name, they're a type of bird. Let's go ahead and look up some pictures to give you guys an idea of what they look like. So they're like a bird, they're little, little black birds, and a lot of times they will live in your chimney, much like a bat will, and they'll fly out a lot of times at night, you can see them flying out, and they do resemble bats. A lot of people have actually mistaken chimney swifts for bats, but that's what they look like. They are a protected bird, not allowed to kill them, um, but you can seal them out once they have raised their babies and flown away. At least in Virginia, that's a rule in Virginia, so... But it's not a big deal. They they'll uh, raise their babies and then they'll fly away and uh, and then you can seal the chimney, put a chimney cap on, and that'll keep them from getting in next year. So what is this here? Hello, Mr. Jason. Let's see what we got here. Do you recommend using the Crossfire aerosol for getting rid of bed bugs? Do you think shampooing the carpet floor will get rid of bed bugs. 
Um, Crossfire Aerosol is really handy for traveling. You can take the, the aerosol can, you can keep it in your suitcase, and you can use it on the fly. You know, you don't have to mix anything. It just comes in a can. Um, just to give you guys an idea of the question that was asked, if you go to uh, Crossfire, C-R-O-S-S-F-I-R-E, aerosol. It's one of these little cans like this, uh, which is, like I said, it's really easy to carry with you when you want to go somewhere. If you're traveling and you and you want to make sure you have some, like for bed bugs outbreak, it is a really good way to keep bed bugs from traveling with you on your luggage. Um, that's the only thing I would use it for. I wouldn't use it in a home to try to eliminate bed bugs. Um, I would mix rather, you know, actually use like this one right here, the actual jug. I would mix it myself and use that. I don't feel like aerosols last as long. Um, a lot of the reviews that I have read about the Crossfire aerosol is that people are not getting the same lifespan that you would out of the actual um, mix. So when you mix it, you'll get about 30 day residual. And with the aerosol, people are claiming two to three weeks residual. So it doesn't last as long and they're having to reapply. So uh, do you think shampooing the carpet floor will get rid of bed bugs? I do not believe that that will get rid of bed bugs. Let's see. That little bloop noise that you guys are hearing, that's text messages. So now I've, in, I've added texting. So if you do not want to call and hear if your voice or you're shy um, and you're not chatting in the actual chat here, the, the YouTube chat, then you can absolutely send me a text message and I can read it. It says, hey, I've been watching your YouTube and I have a few questions, so don't hesitate to ask me any questions that you have. Hey, Jason, what do you think of Wonderside? I used it to kill fleas last year, and maybe it did, but the fleas return the next spring. So, yeah, fleas will come back. You know, you do have to treat them, especially if you get them in your yard. Let's see what Wonderside is. Oh. Oh. I don't think that's a very good chemical. Um, I mean, maybe if you were to treat your yard. Looks like I'm getting calls. Let me see here. My... Let me fix my ringer so I can hear calls. Because for some reason, someone just tried to call. If you just tried to call, call back. Because for some reason it did not ring through and I didn't get didn't get the call, so and no, there's no residual in in, in Wonderside. It's just essential oils, which I mean, take it or leave it. They're they are pesticides, but they don't last very long at all. So, but as far as in the house, Alpine's amazing in the house. It's going to last a lot longer. The problem with, with essential oils... Oh, here we go. Here's a call right now. I don't know why it's not making any noise. Hello, this is Jason with Green Acres Pest Control. Can you hear me? I don't think so. Hold on a minute. I can't hear you. Let me fix my audio. For some reason... Whenever... Speakers. There we go. Now I can hear you. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing, Jason? I'm all right. Sorry about that. Whenever I do a Windows update, my computer likes to change all of my settings and turn off my headphones and switch it over to some weird generic soundboard that I don't use anymore. So anyway, <laughs> how are you doing tonight? Hey, it's an absolute issue, too. I can vouch for it. Anyway, yeah. uh, I'm back. So first of all, before I say anything, like, I'm a big fan of the show. Like, I've been following you for a while, so... You know, like, all your videos about, like, you know, don't do this or that, how to mix class fire really help us. I just want to say thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for watching. What's going on? For sure. So my specific issue is that um, so I moved into my last place a year ago, probably a year ago today, and I got bed bugs in that new place. And okay. I called a few pest control people. My landlord helped me, too. Uh, and they applied class fire. Uh, and then later on, I watched the channel, and I started applying class fire myself, too, and stopped calling them back. And my problem was drastically reduced. However, it was never gone. Fast forward to this month, or well, last month, actually, I just moved into my new apartment carrying the same bed bugs over. Um, 
so I guess I kind of want to get your take on the situation, why I could be doing wrong. I mean, I thought of some things like you said how, like, maybe I'm still reintroducing bed bugs or maybe I'm playing Crossfire wrong. Uh, you know, happy to for any suggestions. Or maybe it's Crossfire systems. I'm not sure. Well, there, I mean, there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of fa- fear in, in pest control because bed bugs, the reason that we have to keep switching chemicals is because they develop resistance to the pesticides that we use. And so there is a fear amongst the community that bed bugs will become immune to crossfire. I don't believe that's something that's happening just because of what's in the crossfire, what's on the label. Um, but what I think most of the time when people are having problems, can, I mean, because they're still dying, like you said, they were still dying, but they never were completely gone. The problem is, is yeah. that they are, it, it's killing them. So they're not immune to it because if they were immune to it, it wouldn't be killing them at all. They'd be getting exactly. worse, not getting better. And so what I think yeah. is probably what's happening is that they are being reintroduced maybe from an automobile or from somebody. How did you get the bed bugs in the first place? Do you know? Oh, I just moved into a new place. So I, I never had it before. And I didn't even know it was bed bugs at first until uh, a friend pointed out for me. And I just woke up at midnight trying to catch them and finally caught one. So okay. I think it was in the place I moved into at the time. Okay. Yeah. Cause you could bring them, you could bring them from other places you're the, I mean, the most common way people used to get bed bugs is from hotels. People would bring them in from hotels, but right. a lot that you can get them from uh, friends and family are typically the most common way people get them now. If you're living in an apartment building, they'll come from neighboring apartments, especially if people are going and putting down things like you buy at Walmart. These, you know, pesticides that are really more designed to run them all over the place and chase the bed bugs. Those end up chasing them into other neighboring units, especially with hotels and apartments. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're going to use a repellent, it's not that repellents don't work. It's that you have to be much more proactive. You have to treat all the neighboring units too. Anything that the bed bugs might accidentally be chased into, you have to treat all those units. And you have to do it regularly. You have to treat like every month for several months in order to force the bed bugs to crawl through that, res- that chemical because as they get mm-hmm. hungry... Yeah eventually they will go through that pesticide if you're still there living there. Even though it's a repellent, they will eventually want to travel through it because they're hungry and they don't want to be hungry. And then they die. And that can take anywhere from three, six, even nine months. I've seen it take that long before the bed bugs come out and die. Um, but if you're using a, you know, a non-repellent like you know Crossfire, usually they're dead within 30 to 60 days you're having to apply once a month. A lot of people will apply it. I actually just recorded a video today that I've got that's going up in a couple weeks about um, the the problem where exactly the question that you're asking, why, you know, what what to expect when you're using Crossfire. And, you know, if, if you're applying, so this is another thing I've noticed people do, and I didn't actually mention that in the video. Probably need to go back and re record or re edit or something. But, One of the things that people do is they don't set themselves up on a regular schedule. So if you treat with Crossfire and let's say four or five weeks go by and it's great and you don't have any bites, you're not getting any bed bugs, you're not seeing any live bugs. And then so you wait a couple more weeks and then all of a sudden you see another one. And it's, it's more along the lines of you should probably just plan on treating once a month for several months so that just in case the chemical wears off and there are other infestations there that haven't been completely eliminated, that those bugs will also crawl out and die. I used to recommend, I actually would would, would not do any less than 90-day service calls. So if I would do a bed bug service with Crossfire, I would require people to have me come out two more visits, not just the initial, but two more months. And so that way they're getting a 90-day um, plan once right. a month. And I actually recommend that for people doing it themselves because you are more likely to make a mistake than someone like me that's been doing it for 26 years. And so I think it's just better. It's safer because if you do miss a spot or if you misapply in a certain way, the idea is that hopefully next month you'll do it right. And then you eventually you'll catch them all and you'll kill them all. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But you could treat as often as once a week, but I don't recommend it. I don't think you need to treat that often. Sounds like a lot. Like, if if 
I, I'm just a bit confused because I jotted down all the places I personally went and tried to cut them out, including taking the bus, uh, not going to work for office. Right. And I mean, maybe it's being produced by a neighbor. I'm not sure. But if it's not being introduced, what would your next bet be for, you know, the situation not being gone, but still under control? I don't think I understand the question. Like, well, what would your next bet be if, uh, um, if their bed bugs not being introduced? What, what would you think the next suspect would you be? you got to figure it? out who's bringing them in your apartment and tell them stop coming over here. <laughs> I mean, that's that's it's a tough love type situation if someone's bringing them in. Um, and they may not know. The thing is, is that bed bugs don't, they don't always cause a person to have a reaction. So... Just because you're reacting from the bites doesn't mean other people are. And, I mean, I did a house. It's it's one of the craziest things. It's the first time I've ever seen it. It's a long time ago. I've seen it a lot since then. But I had a house that I did. It was in Hardy, Virginia, out on Smith Mountain Lake, Virginia. And I went out there, and I treated their house. They had a queen-size bed. The only person in the entire house that was getting eaten was not showing a single mark on his body. His bed was absolutely covered in bed bugs. When I flipped the mattress... There were probably ballpark two or three thousand bed bugs between the mattress and the box spring. There were oh, wow. so many bugs that he got visibly sick when he saw exactly how many bugs. But he didn't have a single bite <laughs> on his body. They were biting him, but he wasn't reacting from the bite. And so people can actually travel around and bring these things around. He never knew he had bed bugs at all. The way he figured out he had bed bugs was his aunt was putting up a house nearby she came to visit him and they started biting her and that's the only way they knew that they had bed bugs at all because she was just finalizing all the stuff with building her house and everything like that so she came and stayed for a couple months then they started eating her and so she of course reacted from the bites and he still has no reaction so they were basically living symbiotically together and he had no idea who knows how many people oh, took yeah. the bed bugs too in the amount of time that he had them Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is really weird. It's yeah. a really weird, unique thing. There are some people that have no reaction, and then I've seen people that have reactions so severe they have to have to put an ice pack on it because it hurts so bad. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, I was just saying, it's kind of weird, because like, maybe my problem is so mild, or I hope I'm not just imagining things, but I haven't seen a life bug like in like at least half a year. Like, Is there any way to like catch them? You know, just so my mind to you have haven't it? seen any bed bugs. Are you getting droppings on the bed, actual black marks on the bed where they poop? I think they are. I mean, maybe they're dust, too. It's really hard for myself to tell. I mean, I'm also getting some blood stains. I mean, and I had a pest control guy come out a week ago. He was like, that's a sign, but at the same time, he said he's not sure. He's like, maybe I'm just bleeding. I'm just like, no, I'm pretty sure it's the bug. But, again, I haven't seen one. So, I don't know if there's any effective way of actually just catching one so I can... You know, I, mean, the and be like, I had one. a house I did one time several years ago. They only had a couple. I mean, it wasn't very bad infestation at all. And it actually took me almost an hour and a half to find one. And it was really, it was oh, really wow. in-depth. I mean, I, I tore everything apart. And actually, it wasn't me that found them. It was my five-year-old daughter at the time. She's the one that found the bed bug. She just happened to be there with me, working with me that day. And she she noticed the bed bug in the seam of the mattress. This was the only one I could find. He had a picture on his phone which showed that he did have them, but, you know, he had taken a picture and then threw that one away, of course, so we did, we couldn't find anything, and I just figured, well, maybe he threw away the only bed bug he had until my daughter found one. So it is possible to have a very, very mild infestation. Um, you're not using interceptors or mattress encasements or anything like that, are you? I use a mattress encasement, but I only use it on a new mattress, like you advised in one of your videos. I did not start putting it on after the problem was there. I I got a new one and put it on right away. There is one problem with mattress encasements that just I just thought about this week that I actually looked into. Okay. A lot of mattress encasements are uh, anti-liquid, um, so they're actually designed to repel water because a lot of mattress encasements are used on oh. children's beds where, people, where children will wet the bed. And so that way it keeps your mattress safe from spills and stains and stuff like that. But the problem is, is that it also won't absorb the crossfire in the same way that an actual mattress will. And if you're treating a mattress encasement with a pesticide, a lot of times the pesticide will actually rub off, 
where on a normal mattress, That's, when it absorbs uh, into the fabric, it won't actually rub off. It'll stay there for the full month that it needs to. But it will actually flake off of a mattress encasement, especially those real slick ones. It'll it'll come right off of those. It won't stay on them, which is another reason why I require people to remove their mattress encasement before I even do a bed bug treatment. I won't do one with ones on a bed. I just tell them, you know, look, it, I know you don't like the fact that the bed bugs are here, but you've got to take that off of here because I can't treat the mattress if it's on there. Got some insane information. Why like, I didn't know. I have this. I've been having on the entire time. You know, I. Yeah, maybe that's the issue. I don't know. Yeah, and that might be one of your problems. Yeah. Okay. Last question I have, Jason, is uh, yes. what, how come you don't you know, not you don't vouch for uh, the bug interceptors? Because for me, I was like, if I think about it scientifically, it seems like it would work at least catching a bug. Well, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can use them to catch a bug. The problem with an interceptor and using crossfire is they counteract each other because you want you want the bed bugs to crawl yeah. through the chemical. Yeah. You don't want them to have any kind of a of a barrier between them and the crossfire because ultimately the crossfire is non repellent. So they want to be able to crawl out and get to you. And if they can't get to you, they can't crawl through the chemical. They can't die. And so, but a lot of interceptors don't even work. The thing is, is that I have gone into houses. I have seen all different models of interceptor from the round ones that just look like a coaster to the ones that are actually pretty intricate that have like almost like a little maze design on them. And all of them, I have seen that bed bugs could actually get through them. I have found bed. I mean, bed bugs can climb slick surfaces. A lot of people don't believe they can, and they aren't as good as like a spider or a cockroach, but they can absolutely climb a, a sick, slick surface. I've got a glass jar right inside my dre my desk right here that's full of bed bugs that I've shown on live all the time. Now they're dead now, so I can't really show how they can climb up a glass, but I've done it before several wow. years ago. I've showed how, yes, they can climb a sick, slick surface. Look, they're up around the rim of the lid and stuff like that. So, um, you know, this, this whole, you know, bed bugs can't climb slick surfaces is actually not true. They can. I was going to say, because I put on before for like two months, and, you know, this pest control guy was recommending I do that, but I never caught one, but I was still getting bites. I was like, what's going on? Like, are these things even working? No, no. Interceptors usually do not work. They can get around them. Got it. Cool. Thanks so much, Jason. I hey. got a lot of better information. Oh, yeah, like, anytime. You, something, I have no idea. you have a good night. You too. Thank All you. Right, bye. bye. So, um, I don't recommend interceptors. I don't recommend mattress encasements, um, especially the, uh, you know, these, a lot of mattress encasements are actually treated with things like Scotchgard in order to protect your bed and your different, you know, mattresses and stuff like that from staining. And these will also uh, hinder the ability for pesticides to absorb correctly on the bed when you're treating the mattress or the box spring. So I do recommend that if you're going to treat your mattress with Crossfire, your box spring with Crossfire, you do need to remove your mattress encasements before you do it. And leave them off. Don't put them back on there because you need the bed bugs to come into contact with the chemical. If you spray your mattress and then put your mattress encasement right back on the mattress, the bed bugs, how are they going to come into contact with the chemical? They can't. Sorry, I have the hiccups. Coffee gave me hiccups. All right, so let's see here. I do not recommend essential oils for the control of any bugs. All right, so um, the reason I do not recommend essential oils for the control of any bug is because essential oils are not proven science. They are um, basically hearsay. There are all kinds of products out there with essential oils in them, and they will claim and they will swear up and down all these other, you know, all this is definitely going to work, but they're not really truly tested. The only testing that they've done is typically in-house testing, and if they're going to tell you their product works, well, of course, that's what they're going to tell you. They want to sell you a product. So I don't recommend um, essential oils for the control of bugs. Now, there are proven cases where essential oils do work, like peppermint oils, cinnamon oils, stuff like that. But the problem with these oils is they are actually toxic to an extent to humans. The problem with essential oils, especially cinnamon and peppermint, Cinnamon oil, peppermint oil, are um, they can cause SIDS in babies. So they've been linked to sudden infant death syndrome where the baby stops breathing in the middle of the night and they die in their sleep. Um, and they've also been linked to the death of cats. Cats are actually, uh, peppermint specifically, is poison to cats. And so I don't recommend using essential oils in your home, especially if you have children or pets and you don't want to, you know, you don't want to put these things in your house where it could actually harm you. 
there's too much at stake when you're dealing with pesticides and when you're dealing with bugs to apply something that could harm you. I never recommend people harm themselves. And I don't say this because I'm trying to sell pesticide. I mean, this website right here, uh, that's my Amazon page. So I make a percentage of a sale off of this stuff. I don't care if people buy my stuff or not. The thing is, is I have this here so you can find the stuff you need so you can get the products that you need to take care of the bugs you need to take care of. But these are not essential oils. These are not, you know, maybe if you're making soap and you want a nice smelly soap, then put a little drop or two of essential oil in there, make it smell nice. But other than that, essential oils should not be used as pesticides. People use them because they believe they're all natural and they're safe, but there's nothing all natural about cramming three or 400 pounds of peppermint leaves and squishing them all together and forcing the oil out and separating the oil from the leaf. Peppermint is natural inside a peppermint leaf, not in vast quantities of oil. You know, even a little vial like this, that's, you don't understand how many leaves of peppermint actually went into making that one little vial of oil. It's not natural. It's actually concentrated, and I don't recommend it. And that's why I don't recommend it, because it's harmful. I don't want you to hurt yourself. The whole reason that I do this channel, the whole reason I have you know Green Acres Pest Control YouTube or whatever, is to teach you about how to do it safe. That's why I've got these warnings, you know, this stuff like this up here that says, you know, the label's a law. Read your label, read your label. I always tell people to read your label. It's important to follow the label. If you follow the label of the pesticide, it will not hurt you. Make sure you follow the label. It's like buying an Ikea couch and following the instructions on putting it together. You know, you don't take the instructions and throw them away. Just because it's a pesticide doesn't mean you don't need to read the label and read your instructions on how to apply it. There's my lecture for the day on essential oils. Um, and, and that's another thing about essential oils and labels too, just to, just to reiterate here, is that everybody has different directions. You know, you can buy one product from one company and they say to apply it this way to get rid of ants or ticks or whatever, and then another company will say to do it a different way, and it's the same exact thing. So which is it? Is it, is it this way or is it the other way? And no one can decide on the best way to get rid of a bug using essential oil because essential oils are not proven science. They really don't work. So don't waste your money. Um, let's see. So Finley is crying in the bedroom. I can hear him, and he is crying a little bit. He went to sleep, but now he's awake again. So if you guys hear him, he is a nine-month-old baby. He is almost 10 months. He will be 10 months next week, but he is... Um, not happy when he wakes up and in, in when he's supposed to be asleep. Let's see. I have been lucky and have only dealt with fleas, and those were bad enough. I'm leaving my stove on accidentally if I see bed bugs. <laughs> um, let's see. Crossfire worked for me. Tom said that. Tom Patterson. Um, let's see. Did he? Um, did he never clean his bed? Okay, so that bed that I was telling that story about. Um, he actually, so the bed bugs he had were between the mattress and box spring. He did, whenever he changed his the mattress, the, the, the sheets were clean, but whenever he would change the mattress, and the sheets and stuff, he just didn't get any bug. He didn't get any blood really down around it. They were on the skirting, but the skirting was kind of hid up inside the mattress and box spring, so you didn't really see it. To look at the bed, you could not see the bed bugs until I took the bed apart. So they were hidden pretty well inside that mattress. Um, um, uh, what did that miss a question, Jamie? Somebody asked me a question up here. Let me see. 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 Um, Griffin, Mike Griffin, uh, is there a store you can get Crossfire? You cannot buy Crossfire over the counter. You have to order it online. Uh, what can I do to get rid of bed bugs in one day? Uh, move, move, and leave everything behind. Um, Let's see, and the Raid Foaming Spray, you would need to read the label, you know, because I don't use Raid Foam Spray. I just have it there as an option for people that need something immediately, you know, while they're waiting on Crossfire to arrive. And what he's asking about there is this little, this, this, this product right here, this one. You want to get this specific one because this is basically, um, this is Crossfire in a Raid in Raid. So you can buy it. And you can you can get a hold of this um, at your you know local Walmart or whatever they do sell this. This is Crossfire in a can, but like I said before about the aerosols, 
aerosols are not as effective as an actual, you know, concentrated form. And so I usually don't recommend aerosols because they're not as effective. But they are effective until you can get Crossfire and apply Crossfire. Which actually there's a pretty good sale on it right now. If you look, um, this one, right, this is the Crossfire bottle that I recommend for just people. I mean, I get I get the gallon because I do, you know, lots of bedbug jobs. But this 13-ounce um, bottle is actually, it's only like, what, thirty eight ninety six. That's actually pretty cheap. Um, I've seen it as high as $52, $53 a bottle before. So it's pro I would imagine it's going to go up because typically Crossfire is in higher demand around the holiday season. Like, so school just started back here. School actually started here uh, this week. And so all the kids are going to school. They're hanging out with their friends. And it's really common in a couple weeks for parents to maybe notice that bed bugs are getting in their house. And so usually between now and November, right before you know Thanksgiving, uh, people start getting bed bugs and they want to try to kill their bed bugs before the holidays because, hey, they're going to have family over. They don't want to infest their family's homes. And so it's really common for this the MGK, the, the Crossfire, to actually go up this time of year because it's in high demand. So um, first time ever watching live. I always watch the next day. Cool. Yeah, I'm early tonight. I try. I thought, you know, if the kids are in the bed, like my, my, my other two, my youngest is, of course, in and out of sleep because he's a baby. But Charlie's three and Emma's nine. They're already in bed. They're already in bed. Um, Emma has, she can, she might get up here in a little bit because I told her she doesn't have to stay in the bed if, if, if Charlie goes to bed and, and she wants to get up and she can. But um, I put both of them to bed already, so they're in bed. And that's why I'm here early. I'm like, you know, I've, I've got people from the U.K., that don't really get a chance to watch very often. And so I decided to jump on early tonight to give people a chance to catch me early. Because, you know, 9.30 is late, even for me. Especially, I got to get up tomorrow morning. I got a job at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. I got to kill some hornets. And I want to get out early when they're still tired and lethargic. And I can get in there and kill them when it's cool. I have a 12-year-old daughter, an 18-year-old cat. And I've had no bad effects from real deal pesticides. Make sure you read the label for how to apply it correctly. Yes, absolutely. Um, that's what the label is for. The label is there to uh, instruct you on how to do it correctly and safely. That's what the label's for. What do you do if bed bugs are still in your clothes after drying them? Uh, that's hard to believe. Uh, are they dead? They should be dead. If it's 160 degrees for or if it maybe your dryer is not getting hot enough, you know, if if your dryer is not getting hot enough, then you may need to check your settings and make sure it's on the highest heat setting. It needs to be on the highest heat setting to kill bed bugs in the dryer. Um, one more thing about Wonderside, I saw that you have it on your Amazon list. Yes, I do. So that's for yard only. The reason I have it is because when you total treat the yard, I wanted something that was safe that people could use that they weren't going to hurt their pets because people will let their pets out early and they shouldn't. But I wanted something to use on the, the entire yard so they could treat the whole yard for things like fleas. And that's why I have it listed because it's an easy to apply. You just screw it on the end of the water hose and spray it over the yard. And it will keep fleas out of the yard, but you may have to treat more often. Because I did do a video on flea treatment and how to treat fleas in the yard. But it's something you have to do regularly, even if you use a regular liquid pesticide. I am going to be right back. Oh, no, I can't. I can't answer the phone. I can't answer the phone right now. I got to use the bathroom. I'm going to go use the bathroom. Y'all listen to some music. I'll be right back.
I'm sorry. I had to go to the bathroom. I drank all that coffee, and I had to go to the bathroom. So, that's a thing that I do. I'm one of those streamers that admits to when they sit on the, t to the computer for too long, they have to use the bathroom. I try to go before I get on here and everything, but I still end up having to pee or something because I drank all this coffee. But that's how I stay awake. And I also have a 40-ounce cup of water that I drink. This is a real-world streamer. I ain't gonna say I'm taking a hydro break when I gotta pee. Anyway, let's see. Everybody's, everybody's sending me money. Y'all don't have to do that. Kenju sent me another five dollars. Jamie sent me five dollars. Thank you, Jason, for all the wisdom you share with us. It's been really helpful for me, and I'm sure many others. I send folks over here from Reddit Weekly. Oh yeah, I know. I get a lot of people from Reddit. That's probably where I get most of my. I don't know. Reddit can be cancerous. <laughs> um, let's see. What have I got here? Got a lot. Got a lot of messages coming through. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Hey, Jason, your YouTube page has been a great comfort during my bed bug experience. I've just had three professional chemical treatments in my apartment. Can you talk about what to expect afterwards? Uh, so far, after the third treatment, I had to vacuum eggs and dead bugs on my bed panels. I just found one live bug. Well, that's pretty good. Crawling on my wall. Uh, then one dead one in my bed. Any advice would be great. Thank you. So, when treating with Crossfire, actually, this is my new video I, I just filmed today. It'll go up in a couple weeks because I've got two videos that are already set to go up next week and the week after. But I have a video I recorded today. I'm trying to get ahead because I'm going out of town Monday. And I'm going to Disney World, take your kids to Disney. And so. <sighs> I may not even be here for live next week. But what to experience after treating for bed bugs? If you treat with Crossfire, then within usually it takes you about two to three weeks to get a really big knockdown on your bed bug problem. Bed bugs um, have, so their eggs take about six to ten days to hatch. And that bed bug doesn't bite you right away after it's hatched. It takes another six to ten days to actually come out and bite you. So that can be almost three weeks from the original treatment period. So a lot of people will get an influx of bed bug bites, usually about two to three weeks from the original treatment date. The chemical is still effective. It lasts for 30 days. So even at the 21 day mark, even though you have an influx of bed bugs, they will die too. They will die. Now you can, some people will treat on that second week, that second or third week they treat again. Um, that's so they get a stronger residual because what happens when you apply a pesticide, whether it's crossfire or anything, the pesticide will slowly start to lose its effectiveness over a period of 30 days. So even though it's still killing bugs, it kills them slower so they don't die as quickly so they can make it out and maybe even bite you again. And so what I usually recommend people do if that's really is a problem and they have a really bad infestation to where the bugs are coming out and biting them more uh, frequently, then I would say treat again in two weeks to give yourself that extra boost of residue that will last you out, outlast the, the actual infestation. And that works really well. That has worked the best for typically everybody that comments that asks me on YouTube. Um, as long as you treat, you know, once every two weeks, then usually two or three treatments is all it takes and then they're dead. So, and that's honestly the quickest remedy for bed bugs. You know, there's, there's, that's why heat treatments are sold to people is because so like like Mike is asking in chat, he's like, what's the quickest remedy that's available uh, in stores and Home Depot, Lowe's and places like that? There are not quicker remedies. That is actually going to take longer to get rid of your bed bug problem by going to Lowe's or Home Depot. It is going to take you longer. You need to figure out a way to get the pesticides that you need. Now, there are some stores that exterminators will actually run. Um, now, I'm not in the business of retail. I don't sell pesticides. I don't, I don't want to deal with sales tax. I don't want to deal. That's just too much of a headache for me. And I hire a CPA to handle all my taxes, and I don't want to put him through that either. So I just don't do retail. Um, but there are some companies that do. If you live in an area where there is a local exterminator that will sell you Crossfire, that's what I recommend you do if you don't want to have to order it over the Internet. But that is right now. As of right now, you know, what is this? Uh, August 18th. 2022, the best chemical for bed bugs is Crossfire. You heard it here. Best chemical. That's what I recommend. 
Um, it's the fastest, quickest, most reliable way to get rid of bed bugs um, that I that I have known of. It's very effective. So, do you have any advice on how to avoid picking up bed bugs when moving if renting a vehicle or hiring a mover? Yeah, so I actually have a video about that. Let me show you the video. Let me just, just right here. So if you go to my channel and you go to my playlist, I've actually got a whole playlist on bed bugs. Um, where is it? Bed bug crash course right here. But if you search moving, just moving, that's all you have to search. There's a very first video is moving and bed bugs. How to avoid moving with bed bugs. Don't take bed bugs with you when you move. Guaranteed. That, read that, watch that, check out that video. That's the best video um, about moving and what to do. Let me, in fact, let me do this. And then let me share, copy the link, and I will paste it here. So let's see if that'll work. No! Won't let me do that. All right. Let me send it in chat. I'll do it in chat. It won't let me send it through Skype. I can't send it through Skype, but I can send it in chat. That's the moving for the person that just texted me. I'm not going to read out your phone number, but they texted me on Skype. Um, that is what I would recommend you go to if you're wanting to try to avoid moving. And I've got another text that came through. And sorry, I do read texts and calls before um, YouTube chat, unless it's like a like a super chat or something. But um, does Crossfire really work? We seen a, a bug in the bed, so we tried to steam clean everything, and we got an inspector to come a few days later. He seen bed two bugs on my mattress tag, and he says it looks like we carried them in about a month ago. But in our other two beds, he didn't see anything. What should we do? Should we use Crossfire? Uh, we just got it in the mail or pay for the exterminator. How long do I have to wait after applying Crossfire to my house? Um, so if you're going to apply Crossfire for bed bugs, you need to apply. I would do it. I would just do it. Um, if it doesn't work in a month, then you can hire the pest control guy to come out and do it himself. But... I would apply the crossfire. I would do it and, and probably save yourself several hundred, if not a thousand or more dollars. Uh, I would do that. Um, you only have to wait until it's dry to, to re-enter the house. So if you're asking a question, how long do you have to wait to get back in the house, then you just wait a couple hours till it's dry. Uh, if you've got ceiling fans, turn them on. Turn on your ceiling fans, let them go, and they will dry it even faster. So... And Jamie, you're sweet. That said shit, and it didn't let me put it there, but I, I, I went ahead and put it there anyway. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a grown man, and I can read words like that. So, this is the best free advice about all kinds of bugs on YouTube that I know of. <laughs> I love my job. I'll be flat honest. I really like my job. I, uh, I, I and, and Muhammad... Um, do not use Malathion to kill bed bugs. It, it'll make you really sick. I don't recommend that. Uh, Malathion is available in the United States, but it is not something that you should use. Not something you should use at all. It is very toxic to human beings and should never be used for bed bugs. So, in fact, fact, you are a troll, and I am just going to go ahead and my, you know where, where is our mod, Kenju? You need to, you need to tell her when she gets in here, you need to say, hey, where have you been? And call her out, because she is gone, and she is not here to, to, to block these people. She must be busy, because I'm early tonight. So, how long will bed bugs stay in your clothes before they leave to seek you out? They just, a couple days? Not long. Um, so what is Beth? Let's see. Beth says, hi, how are you? Hello, Beth. I can't get Crossfire. What would be my other alternative? Um, so where do you live, Beth? I can't remember. Hello, this is Jason with Green Acres Pest Control. How are you? Hello. Hello. It, 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 who, uh, who, who is it? Uh, I want to turn the, the volume down. Who, who is this, please? 
This is Jason. You called me. Who is this? Oh, it's Jason. I'm so glad. My name is Sam. I'm calling from Colorado. Okay. And bed bugs have destroyed uh, my marriage and uh, my health. And I've I've used Crossfire, uh, and it's and it's making progress. But Great. the question I have for you, okay, is at, at what point do you do I want to? clean up the residual kind of stickiness of the crossfire that, you know, multiple sprays every 14 days kind of leaves. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to clean it up because I know the bed bugs crawl through it and die, but right. I don't know how long I, I leave it there. It sounds like you might have mixed it a little stronger than you're supposed to, because when I mix crossfire, I usually get a clear. It's usually not sticky or... At, at all. I mean, there are times where, like, if I mix it the day before and I'm going out to do a bed bug job like that morning or something, and I've mixed it that night so I could get out and get early, especially for people that leave early for work and they want you to go. Because I usually make people leave the house for like three hours. And so they're like, oh, just come before I leave for work. You can treat it then. Um, and so I'll mix it like the night before. And sometimes it'll settle to the bottom and I just shake it up real good so it doesn't like squirt out white. But if it's mixed properly, it should be clear. You shouldn't be getting a weird, like, residue. Okay, okay. And then um, and then when it dries, it kind of leaves that, uh, like, a dusty, powdery. I mean, that's when you know you did it right, right? Because there'll be, that's the powder and the residual they, they crawl through. Is that, is that correct? I've never had that happen. Okay. I, I think you. I think you might be mixing. No, it sounds like you're mixing it too strong. That's what it sounds like to me. That's what think I think you're you're doing. Now on black furniture, like I've used it on um, like solid black furniture. I've used it on like leather. Uh, I try not to use it on leather because it's not really going to adhere to leather like it does upholstered furniture. But I have noticed that when it dries, it does leave like a weird kind of a film. But yeah. if it and and that's, that's typically. Yeah, and that's typically on the furniture that's more slick. Like the matte type finishes usually doesn't leave that type of uh, that type of um, film at all, and it just dries clear, and you don't notice it's even there. And so that's what I'm just wondering if maybe you might have it a little bit too strong. I mean, it's going to kill the bed bugs, but it's going to be unsightly. You might if you if you apply again, and you're going to go and you're going to apply it again. I would probably clean the surface before you apply it. And that way you're not constantly building up more residue on top of more residue on top of more residue. I remember back in the day when I would use things like Diazinon and Durazban. And they are like milky white. When you mix that stuff, it looks like milk that you've mixed in a tank. And it does leave like a weird kind of a white residue film. And after a couple of months of treating baseboards in a house, the baseboards would get this weird kind of milky color on them, and you just went through and wiped them, and it would come clean. It wasn't, like, really hard to clean or anything like that. But that's usually okay. what I would recommend. If you're having a milky film, I would probably clean it before you reapply. Okay. And, and, and you know, I, my, my nature is to over-tighten bolts on cars and yeah. overdo everything. So then, you know, I'm like, well... You know, I don't. I don't want it to be too weak, and I, I can't really tell with the with the bubbles if I'm exactly at the mark there with the you know the big crossfire gallon. And right. So you know, when I'm tilting it back and forth, trying to make sure I get the right mixture, and then I always go on the heavy side. So yeah, and, and that's probably video, what it is. I I try to help people mix that stuff right. Most people under mix it because they're using that little 13 ounce bottle, and they're trying to go through and. And and they're trying to, uh, you know, they're trying to go through and they're trying to mix it and they're trying to use it in a way that they're, uh, you know, they're 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 trying to divide it in half and mix like half a gallon. And so most of the time, yeah. it's an undermix issue, never really over mixing. That's what I figured. You had bought the gallon and you were mixing it that way, but that's what, yeah, um, and, yeah, that's what I think is a problem. And listen, let me ask you one thing about my garage. Okay, so I'm kind of a hoarder, two-car garage, living in a subdivision. Got an old Mustang in there and a bunch of boxes of parts. And I'm telling you, I don't have great eyesight, and, and the infestation just 
it, it didn't stay in the bedroom. It, it, it followed me to where I was. Oh, yeah, that's what they'll do. pay enough attention. Yeah, wherever yeah. you go, they'll and follow so, you because you're the meal. Oh, and, and I am the meal. And, you know, I've, I've got, I, I, I mean, I had the original carpet in the house. It needed to get replaced anyway. And when we took that up, they were living under there in, in paradise, I'm telling you. Uh, it really it really bummed me out because I just, I'm like, well, where did I not spray crossfire? Where can they be? Can they get in my gun safe? Can they get, you know, down down to plywood by the, by the plumbing that goes into the crawl space? You know, how do I... How do I stop them? From, Normally, from you that? well, crawl, the crawl spaces are not going to be places that bed bugs are naturally going to be drawn to because they don't. They want to stay near you, like you said. They're following you through the house. Unless you're living in a crawl space, they're not really going to start living in the crawl space. I have never. I have yeah. had customers that are just so paranoid that they want you to treat crawl spaces and everything. I have never found bed bugs in a crawl space. Not in 26 years. I've. It just doesn't happen. Um, now I have found them in attics because bat, bats bring them in the attic. And so I've found them there, but I've never actually found any in a crawl space ever, not under a house, but they, they typically stay to the living area and they'll be in your kitchens, bathrooms. They will be all over the house. And if they're really heavily infested, which is what it sounds like you've been dealing with, they'll be, they'll just, they will be everywhere. And it's one of those things where you just have yeah. to be thorough and diligent and usually within two, three months, you're, you've killed the entire infestation because they have nowhere to go to get a meal. They don't know anything's been done because it's crossfire. So they just behave like they normally would, like nothing's been done, and they all die out eventually. And 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 if they if they, if I find I, I got bit, maybe I maybe when pit got on my you know on my uh, 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 my my foot or something, and I go to bed, you know, and the, the mattress or, or I I get I get sloppy and, and one gets me <laughs> when where does it go and when will it want to feed again and then will how many will be coming with it how many friends will okay so bed I mean, bugs the thing about bed bugs all right so so this is a question i get this is actually probably one of the most common questions i get about treatments of crossfire because i tell people make your bed like you normally would sleep on your sleep on your sheets and everything and i get people will say well I put a fitted sheet over my mattress. How does the bed bug get back to the mattress if I've covered it with a fitted sheet? You know, for basically the same terminology that I use as to why you don't use a, a mattress encasement after you've treated your mattress, except for it's open underneath the sheet. And so what happens typically when a bed bug bites you, like say you, you travel, you get them on your clothes, like let's say you're sitting on your couch. Bed bug crawls out and gets on you. You should have treated your couch, right. but if you didn't, and it gets on your clothes, and you take it to bed, and you've got your bed clothes on, you lay down in the bed, and one crawls off of you and bites you. It's on your sheets. Your sheets aren't treated. It's on your clothes. Your clothes aren't treated. But that bed bug is going to have to crawl to get away from you because they don't they don't like to stay near you after they've fed. They like to get away. They're more vulnerable after they've fed. And so usually they will leave you. And so they will crawl down the side of the bed. They might crawl between the mattress and box spring, which should have been treated, and then they, they hit a treated surface and they die. Um, and so that's what they do. They don't bring back their friends. They just die. And you might have more that come out to bite you because every couple of weeks or so as the eggs hatch, you will have more come out to bite you, but they will crawl through the chemical and they will die too because the residue is still there. And so as long as you have a constant residual, they will all die eventually. But I have been in heavily and, infested homes. I mean, really heavily infested homes where it took a couple of months to get rid of the problem. Yeah. Okay. And that's and that's what I'm I'm experiencing. And is it is it like the fully developed um, females that I you know that are the worst of the bunch because they're the ones that are. Uh, well, they have to lay eggs, and in order to lay eggs, they have to get a blood meal. And and how little are the little ones? And and how much trouble are they? Can they get in my ears? Can they live? Just, you know, they're my, not going to live on you. So bed bugs won't actually live on your body. They're not like lice or fleas or something like that. They can't live on you because they don't have sticky pads on their feet. They fall off. A lot of people claim they live in their hair and everything. Really, that's that's more likely lice. But um, they can't live on a human being. They can't live on a dog. They can't live on a cat. You know, dogs and cats don't bring them in the house. They they are they are a parasite that will live near you but not on you. 
And so, when, yeah, so they, they can't actually survive on your body. They're not going to crawl in your ears or anything like that. Now, that doesn't mean one hasn't bitten somebody in their ear, but they're not going to stay there. They're going to crawl away. Um, and so, typically, the smallest bed bug, um, when it first hatches from an egg, the egg is the size of about a third of a, a, third of a grain of rice. And that's how big the eggs are. And so the baby that hatches from that egg is that size because the eggs only hold one. They don't hold multiples. Like roaches, a roach egg can what hold color the, what 50. What color is the egg and what white. color is the hatchling? The, they're white. white. They're okay. white, translucent. When the hatchling hatches, it's translucent. It's because it hasn't fed. And so once it feeds, which takes about a week after it hatches, it will feed. And then it will start to develop this little dark spot in the middle of its body. And as it grows larger, and, and it only feeds to shed its skin. So what it does is it waits about a week to 10 days after it hatches, comes out, feeds, sheds its skin. It engorges on blood to help shed its exoskeleton. And then it grows a new one underneath. And so it does that five times. That's called an instar phase when they when they shed their skin like that. And so um, and they I will... And I find those parts of them, the exoskeleton. Yeah, you you'll find those. They... Yeah, they look like shedded skins, kind of like a snake, but it looks more like a bed bug skin. And so they will shed those, and they do that five times, and when they become full-grown adults, that's when they develop that rusty brown color, and they're more of a solid color, like a bed bug, like what you've seen in all the pictures and videos and stuff on the internet, is they're, they're solid then. That's only after they've become a full-grown adult. But they've pretty much translucent all the way around with like a black dot or a brown dot in the middle of their body. And they take a and they take on a, a more sinister a, a appearance. Right. For that <laughs> yeah. Description. Right. When they're fully done. Yeah. Right. Well, listen. You know, I really appreciate everything you're doing. If there's anything I can do to help support, you know, I can. I'm I'm glad to make donations because I know you you help people. Um. But but it's really destroyed my life, and I just I thought I could just you know watch some of your videos and, and take care of it and it's just not that easy <laughs> it's it's i really I, I get this problem a lot I, my wife has pointed this out to me i've had people point this out to me i have been doing pest control for 34 years i started when i was six years old and so <laughs> i get this a lot where people are like you know it's not as easy as you make it out but i don't think of it like i've been doing it for 34 years so it's like second nature to me and I talk, I try my best to make my videos as elementary as, as I can to try to teach people that really don't understand how to do what I do, how to do it right. That's why I've got so many. A lot of people will comment on my videos and they'll be like, well, then how do I mix it? So I made a mix video. And they'll say, well, where do I apply it? So I made different appliance videos. And you kind of have to put them all together to get the whole picture of how to do a bed bug job. If I were to do, like I have a, a course on how to do bed bugs it's it's in my description on all my videos and you go there it's like 36 minutes to sit through and watch but it's step by step this is what i do this is how i take a bed apart this is how i treat base baseboards this is how and actually what i did was we went on vacation two years ago i took all my equipment with me i set up a camera and we get a vrbo house and i film myself doing a mock-up bed bug job because i'm like people need to know how to do this and people aren't just going to let me go in their house and film me doing a bed bug job i've had one person do yep. that in six years and no one else will let me do it so so it's like that's what i did I, you know and so i tried to make it as as it's it's rough it's rough do it at my house my friend <laughs> There's a special place in heaven for you because, you know, it's a very traumatic and there's a stigma associated with them. And, you know, people are, are like, oh, you know, gosh, what if you have one on you? I don't want you coming over to my house. And so they I've, yeah, I had a guy them. one time where I treated, he was so severely infested that I was actually talking to him. It was in February a couple of years ago. And I was talking to him and it was cold outside and he was wearing this big leather jacket and it was covered in bed bugs. I was looking at him, and I, I didn't notice it at first, but as I was talking to him, I realized that parts of his jacket were moving, and there were bed bugs crawling all over his jacket. And I was like, where did you get that jacket from? And he said, well, I pulled it off the coat rack in the house. And I said, you need to go put that back in that house. That house has just been treated for bed bugs. You need to put that, go lay it on that couch in there so those bed bugs crawl off and die. Uh, you've got thousands of them all over you. you got to get those off of you. You're going to take them everywhere you go. And, and, and I think that's that may have been kind of my situation i mean and how do i get them out of my nice leather coat i don't want to throw it away it's, you know it's like or 
Well, what I tell people to do is if, if you've got personal belongings that, you know, have bed bugs in them, like coats or shirts or, you know, people have like baseball cards and stuff and they don't want to get rid of these things because they're collectible yeah, yeah, items. Exactly, and so exactly. you can set those in like a shoe box or something, and just stick it under the bed. Just as long as it doesn't touch the box spring, sit it there. And when the bed bugs crawl out of that stuff to get to you, they're right there, right at you where they're going to crawl out. They'll crawl across the bed and they'll die. And that's what I recommend people do. Leave it in the room where you hang out so that when the bugs crawl out to get to you, they have to crawl through the crossfire to get to you, and then they'll get out of the stuff and they'll die. They can't get a blood meal from a jacket. They can't get a blood meal from a baseball card. They have to get to you. And if they have to crawl across a treated surface to get to you, they'll die. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I see. I understand that. What about vehicles? I've sprayed crossfire on the dashboard of my car. And <laughs> Typically with I'm vehicles, sure. you treat between the where the seats clamshell together, where the seat belts go down and buckle in to the floor where they bolt on. You want to treat in those areas, yeah. under the chairs, and around, along the running board. Those are the places I have found bed bugs living in cars and uh, trunks, especially trunks. If you've got a trunk of a car that you throw stuff in, you need to take everything out of the trunk, treat the trunk heavily, and then let it dry, and then you can put your stuff back in the trunk. But that way, uh, yeah. I mean, if you were to go to like Target or somewhere and put your groceries or like Kroger or somewhere, put your groceries in the back of your trunk and there's bed bugs in there, you're going to bring bed bugs back in the house whenever you bring your groceries in the house. So you make sure that you yeah, treat yeah. your trunk of your car too. And the trunk uh, is I, also I, the I, coolest I, part of the car. Like, so if you set your car even out in this boiling hot sun in the middle of a Walmart parking lot to where there is no shade, it will get really hot in the passenger compartment, and a lot of bed bugs will die just by themselves in the car because it's so hot. But the trunk is actually insulated, and it will not get as hot as the rest of the car, and the bed bugs will survive in the trunk. So I tell people, be sure to treat your will, trunk and everything. Will they die if I put them in a big, thick, black trash bag, and it's 90 degrees out for four no, days in a row? I haven't had people have success with that at all. I know a lot of people claim that's what you need to do. But the problem is, is that, that you'll have cold pockets inside the bag. It's not that it has to be constant temperature. And this is another reason why a lot of times heat treatments fail is because you need to have a constant temperature of above 130 degrees because eggs die at 125 plus and, and, and adults die at 118 plus Fahrenheit. And so it's got to be really, really hot. And 130 degrees, even in a 90-degree weather day, you might have a couple of pockets that get that hot, but that whole bag is not going to get that hot. And then, of course, the sun goes down, and then it cools down, and then the sun has to come back up. It has to get hot again, and it's only going to get that hot between the hours of like 12 and 3, maybe 3 and 4 in the afternoon, and you just don't have a consistent long enough period for it to get hot enough and stay hot. It has to get hot and stay hot. What do you think of new van strips? They're like a. a I a think different... they're toxic, and I think they have their 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 active ingredient is vapona. It kills people, and I don't recommend them. It's dangerous, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. it's really dangerous. Uh, yeah, yeah va vapona. It, it, vapona is a restricted. I actually pulled up the label. I think it was just last weekend when I did my live stream Thursday last week. I pulled up the label of Vapona, and I read it on stream, and I told people the, the and it, that's a restricted pesticide, so the only people that can buy that are people like me with license, and it is so toxic. Right. They tell you all of the precautionary statements, like, you know, you have to wear a respirator, you have to wear Tyvek suits, you have to wear all this stuff when applying it because it is so toxic. Even just to get on your skin, uh, it can hurt you, and so I don't recommend new van strips at all. It's the same thing. It's just soaked like pieces of plastic that have been soaked in uh, Vapona. I don't recommend it at all. Oh, oh, I, I, I see. Yeah. And, and one other thing, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to let you attend to other folks because I'm, I'm okay. dominating your time and I yep. appreciate it. But um, have you ever had a treat outside? You know, I, I get all, I throw all the stuff out and then I find out it's out on my porch and then, you know, they're around and they, they, they check the carbon dioxide and they come cruising back, back, back in. Well, now, I don't treat the outside of a house particularly. I will treat porches. I have actually found bed porch, bugs yeah, living on porch furniture. Like, people will have wicker furniture or lawn chairs sitting on their porch where they sit there and relax during the day, and they will be on the porch. So I usually do treat porch furniture and around doors and windows and stuff on the porch, but I don't do the whole outside because Crossfire is really labeled for inside use only. So I only treat, like, basically inside areas, like inside porches, screened-in porches and stuff like that. 
what do people usually miss when the, when they're like someone like me, you know, or, or somebody you go, oh, you, you you did such a good job, but you missed this one spot. Now your house is reinfested. Um, well, really, there's not a lot of places that you that people miss because it's I call Crossfire the stupid pesticide because even somebody with little intelligence can apply it. It's not, I mean, it, it is the silver bullet to bed bugs. I've had really good results with it everywhere because as long as you treat at least the mattress, the mattress and the box spring, as long as you treat at least those two places, I've had people that have misapplied Crossfire. They say, well, they sprayed all their walls, they sprayed their whole floor, and they used, you know, three that gallons means- in their house. And I'm like, that's more than you need. That is way more chemical than you need. I mix... That's, that's- that's me, you know, if a little is good, way too much must be. I use less than half a gallon on an entire house. It doesn't take that How much chemical. House? I'm talking seven bedrooms. I went and did a seven bedroom oh, house. Oh. I used three quarters of a tank. I didn't even they use a whole gallon. Them. Yeah, I did. They don't they don't need to throw their carpet away and tear their no. paperboards off. No, no, no. I I'm very I'm I'm very little as far as the customer's concerned. You don't have to tear your house apart. You don't have to take everything out of your dressers or your closets or anything. I treat the areas the bed bugs naturally want to be on, and they go to those places and they die. I've been able to get rid of bed bugs with one-time treatments in hoarder homes where very little really could be done except the beds and the furniture, um, where you could not even get to the baseboards. You could not because you couldn't hardly walk through the house for all the junk piled up everywhere. And I was able to treat most of the surfaces of crouches, couches, love seats, um, beds, mattresses, and I've been able to get rid of bed bugs in those type of homes with just one treatment. There's one lady in particular I'm thinking of off the top of my head where she had lots of stuff all over the place. And the only way that I could treat that house, the only furniture that actually got treated was one couch. She had two. One of them you couldn't even see. But there were two couches in the living room. One couch, which was a triple couch I treated. A love seat I could not treat. Um, and because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a mover, I'm not going to go in there and completely move her whole house when she's, she's piled stuff up everywhere. And she had a Lazy Boy recliner that I treated, which she used all the time. In fact, I think she was sleeping in the Lazy Boy because the bed was full of stuff. I took everything off the bed. That's the only thing that where I actually I looked at my son and I said, we got to take his stuff off this bed because this bed's got to be treated. And I took the bed apart and I just sat the stuff in the middle of the living room and I, I treated the whole bed. I treated the whole box spring. I treated the bed frame and the headboard, footboard and everything. And then I, my son's like, well, do we need to put this stuff back? And I said, no, we're leaving it there. I want her to know this bed was treated. And so and I want her to know what we went through to treat this bed. And so, you know, and that's all it took and the bed bugs died. And so, yeah. you know, they're going to naturally be drawn to those places. And I don't even think I used half a gallon there because I couldn't. I couldn't treat everything. I couldn't do all the baseboards. I couldn't treat the crown molding. I, took, I couldn't get to two-thirds of the house because it was just full of junk. Yeah. Now, I'm getting a new mattress and a new metal bed frame. Would you recommend a preventative Break, yes. Be on the safe side. Absolutely. Where that stuff comes in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, you need to do that. Okay. okay, but I don't need to wrap duct tape on the frame rails. No. And, and casements and leave the don't plastic use encasements. And- yeah, don't use encasements. Take the mat plastic off. Take all that stuff off. Use a bed, just a mattress box spring. They were pinned in in the, in an encasement, and they were getting to me because. And I watched one of your videos, and you said they can actually. Yeah, they can bite through whatever it. Whatever it is, through the through the encasement. Yep, they can. Yep, yep. Threads, Gosh, when you lay I'm just... when you lay on threads, threads are usually sewn in a crisscross pattern. And when you lay on them, the threads will open up. It, even on a microscopic level, they open up. It's like when you, if you get a tarp wet and you push your finger where the wet is, the wet will actually drip through the other side, even though it's a tarp, oh, yeah. because it seeps through. And so that's the, that's the way that you have to think about bed bugs. When you lay on a mattress encasement, your body is pressing on the fabric, opening it up, allowing the bed bugs to bite you through the fabric. So that's and why I don't recommend them. Get me. I'm a back sleeper, and they get my back. Yeah, they'll spot. eat your back, and they can live. The in, and that's all they need. That's all they need is a blood meal. They can lay eggs and everything, and they will live. And when you open that mattress encasement, there'll be thousands in there, and you just didn't realize how how you were breeding them in your bed. So. Okay. I outstanding, outstanding, sir. 
I, I, I salute you for everything you've done. A special place in heaven for you, oh. sir. <laughs> well, hopefully. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> well, you have a great I'll night. I appreciate it. And, and, and I'll be taking it easy on the crossfire and just getting the, the, the areas that the video says. All right. Instead of spraying it like a fire hose on my walls of my house. All right. Well, you have a good day. I really appreciate you calling. Thank you, sir. Bye. That was a lot of good information. He asked a lot of really good questions. That was a really good call. I really appreciate calls like that. That was a great call. So let's see what we got here. Boy, there's lots of questions. If there were any questions that I have not gotten to, because that was a really long call, please post your question again, because there were so much scrolling by, scrolling by, that I missed everything. So, um... It's the Beth says, Jason, let me know if you got my text with the photos. I don't think I did. I don't think I did. Let's see. Nope, I did not. Did I? Nope, I did not get them. I can't get, I don't think I can get photos. You can try. You can try. It's Skype. It's, you know, it's owned by Microsoft. I don't know what they allow me to do. I pay for the number, but they always want you to pay more. And I don't have, I think I have my phone. Let me look at my phone and see if I got any messages from you. No. I did not get any texts. I'm sorry, Beth. Any recommendation for moving without taking any cockroaches with you? Okay, so the same thing that I recommend on that moving video that I posted. Um, and I'll post it again. Let's copy that one. Post it again here for you. That that pertains to bed bugs too. Bed bugs and cockroaches, both. Um, I know it's about bed bugs, but it really is cockroaches just as much as bed bugs. Um, I just sent you photos of bed bug bites on my body. Well, I I'm not very good at telling people what bug bites look like. I'm not a doctor or a dermatologist, and everybody reacts different from bug bites. So. <sighs> Let's see. Any recommendation for moving? Okay, I don't. <laughs> it's on your phone number. Oh, that phone number. Yeah, I can't get them there. That phone number right here that's like right, right there. I can't get images there. So if you need to send me an image, you need to check me out on Facebook and send it there. Um, let me see if I can get that. I click here and I show you this page and I go to Facebook I see slash green acres PC is that it there it is there it is send it there so let me let me copy and paste this to you and that's what I recommend you send it to if you're gonna send a picture so but check us out check us out let me show you this this is a cool picture this is a cool video Watch this. That's Hornets. Bam! That's, that's pretty cool. We made that. Me and Rory did. My son did that. Hit that Hornet nest because he's crazy. There's a picture of Finley. That's my baby. He's gotten so big since this picture, Alicia. Who? Finn. Little Finn. Oh, yeah. What picture are you looking at? The one of him wearing a hat where he was on the couch. And then there's his another one. Just baby Finn. He's just a baby in that picture. Oh, I'll give you a good picture. I'll send you a good one. I just took his nine up pictures. So. So if you're new and you like what I'm doing with these videos and everything that I do, uh, like the video. It's right here. Here's my video. And, it is and you can see that. Just click this little like button right here. This little thumbs up. Or if you don't like it, you can dislike it too. I don't mind. You can dislike it, like it. But you should really subscribe so you get more videos. If you really like the videos that I do and the the step by step direction that I give people on how to kill bugs and stuff, then I really recommend you hit the notification bell so you see when I go live and which so you see when I put up a new video. But just so you know, typically on Tuesdays as when I upload my videos, I upload them on Tuesday afternoons at 7 p.m. 
Uh, that tends to be the best time for everybody, so that's when my videos go live on Tuesday. And then I do my live stream, like what you're seeing now and what you're, what you're a part of right now, and all the chat and everything. That I do every Thursday night, typically after 9 o'clock. But tonight I was able to get on early because my kids were in bed early. And I will try to get early as early as I can, but when you got four children, and three of which all have to be in bed, it can be late before I get on here because, you know, as soon as you tell a child it's time for bed, they, all of a sudden their mouth is as dry as the Sahara Desert. They got to pee. They got to do all this stuff that they didn't have to do before they went to bed. Hello, this is Jason with Green Acres Pest Control. Can I help you? Hello. Hello. I'm calling from Texas. Okay. And I I got, uh, I'm in Lubbock, Texas. And I got a product that I saw you show on TV on uh, one of your YouTubes one day. Okay. And the name of it is five-minute egg and resistant bed bug killer by harris yes and i'm wanting to know you said that was just the same thing as crossfire and the reason i like this is i'm 70 years old and i'm trying to deal with bed bugs and i can't really do that very good job with the tank and the you know the wand and all that right and this comes you know with the spray attachment right so do you remember calling this the same as crossfire it is the same Okay, all right. That's what I'm trying to. So I, so I had it professionally sprayed about three weeks ago. Seven days later, they came and sprayed again. I'm getting eat up constantly, and then I've got some of this. I'm going to take it. I have to. I keep my granddaughter one or two days a week, and I'm going to preemptively spray their house in case I carry a bug over there. Right. I agree. I, I think that's a good idea. And the other thing issue is, I'm did a little bitty did the did the bit do these look the larva look like a little white tiny tiny worm? No. Because I'm getting I'm getting something like that in my hair. That sounds like lice. And well, the guy that I had, you know, the pest control guy, I tried to ask him what could be in my hair. He said, bed bugs don't like your hair. No, they don't. But, I mean, I'm finding all kinds of bed bugs in my house. So I know I have bed bugs, so now I'm thinking I have two kinds of bugs, possibly. Well, that sounds like lice. And if you've got, is it a granddaughter? Is that what you said? Uh, yeah, I have a little granddaughter. Yeah, she's two. Oh, she's, half, she's but, only I mean, two. Sound anything. Yeah, because yeah, if she's she, not school she, age, um, school age girls get bed bugs all the time. My sisters, they used to get them because they had long hair, and so it would touch the desk chair, and they would bring them home. But lice are usually worse in older children, not babies. Babies usually don't get lice. I mean, unless there's an outbreak at like a daycare. When my son, when my uh, my three year old, when he was staying at daycare, when he was like one one years old, he was like he was barely one when he was at the daycare they had a lice outbreak and they had to uh, actually close the daycare for a day and treat it for lice because it was, you know, lice is something you don't want all your babies getting. And so I know it does happen. It's not that common, but it does happen from time to time. But, um, but yeah, that it sounds like lice. If it's white little worms living in your hair, that sounds like lice. That's what it sounds like to me. But pest control really can't control lice. It's something that you have to go to a doctor for. They give you medication for it. So that you you take some kind of medication and that repels them or it something. It kills and they bite them. You? So what happens it is it's a know. yeah it's a hair treatment. So it's like a it's like a shampoo that you use in your hair and it absorbs into the scalp. And when they try to bite you, they die. And that's that's what you have. But you have to get a prescription from a doctor. I mean, you can use Nix. So I've got like links on my page um, on my Amazon page that you can go to for head lice, and it's there. It's called Nix. Um, because I have people ask me about that all the time. It's like, if you're on my Amazon page, it's like, uh, the first one there right now is fleas and then bed bugs, then cockroaches, then carpet beetles, and then lice is like at the very top page on the right. And that's got nicks. That's what I used when I was a kid. My, we got, uh, lice and we just used nicks and it killed the lice. It took care of them. But there are possibility of nicks resistant, uh, lice. And then you would have to go to a to a doctor, and then they would have to give you a prescription for something like Lindane or some kind of a cream that you use in your hair to kill the to kill the lice in your hair. Well, I got I got from just Walmart some of the lice treatment, you know, and I used it a couple of times, 
Yeah, but if it's I not working. TV and I'm on the phone here. <laughs> yeah, if it's not working, if the stuff you bought at Walmart is not working on the hair that you that, that the lice that are in your hair, you probably have a resistant strain, and you're going to need to go to the doctor. It's the only way you're going to get rid of them, and they can get really out of control. I have a video somewhere that I posted. I can't even remember where it is. It was so long ago of uh, lice. And they can be extremely bad. And so I would absolutely recommend because what happens is the the more you have, the more they breed, the more they are. And so they just they compound on top of each other. And eventually you'll just have them really, really bad. And you will spread those to your granddaughter. So. Well, I've got, you know, I get bit all in my house. I get bit all day. I get bit during the daytime by something. I don't know what it is. I get bed at night. I'm sure it's bed bugs because it's the very symptoms of bed bugs. And I find these bed bugs in my house, but I don't know. I'm a, I'm really afraid that I have more than one kind of bug. Oh, I'm pretty so sure my, you have more than. Car. I'm pretty sure you have more than one kind. I'm pretty sure you do because it sounds to me like you've got bed bugs and lice. Okay, so I might need to just go to the doctor and see if they might will give Absolutely. me that other because I tried. That shampoo, well, I, I wasn't real faithful with it because I really thought maybe that's not what it is. I did get that. And they'll, you know, they'll get better if I treat them and kind of, I try not to wash my hair every day because it's so hard on your hair, but I then know you it. can't stand it. Yeah, you're <laughs> and right. And then it's so drying and you get a little scab. I know. And I've been I through it. I've stopping. been through it. When you're young yeah, and all of your sisters it, have it, it's, it's awful. It's awful. Because we had a, we had I think it was three different times when I was growing up because I'm the oldest of five children and my, my three, the three under me are all girls. And so it was one of those things where when we were in public school, because I was homeschooled from the time I was 12 years on and all of my sisters the next year, we were all taken out. And so once everybody got taken out of public school, no one had lice anymore. But it was one of those things where we fought like every year we would have an outbreak of lice because, you know, you got girls and their hair touches the seat can't help it and they bring them home but yeah that's what i think you've got but that like i said i'm not a doctor i can't for sure for sure say that's what it is but they would know better i mean there's several different things it could be but most the most common thing is lice it's probably lice but. okay let me ask you this then in in my car you know i sprayed it actually with some crossfire because i thought maybe it had bed bugs in there because mm -hmm. I think, is, could it be possible that I have fleas in my car, too? It is, but Crossfire probably won't kill the fleas because it's really just for bed bugs. You would need to get more like Alpine or something like that to kill the fleas if you have fleas in your car. But you may have lice in the car, too, because you'll track them around. And so they can live off the body. I think it's like one to two days they can live off of you. And so if you're getting, if they're getting bit enough in your car to live, they can live in your car, too. Because if you're using your car at least once a day or every other day, that's long enough for them to be able to survive in the car. And I mean, and so like you just really can't ever really see them to see what they look like. I mean, that sounds like lice. Is it the lice? Yeah, that they, sounds like lice. I found one funny looking thing out by. It was on my front. Just a, I don't really have a front porch, but it was near my front door. And it was white looking, and it had furry looking things looking on it. And I looked it up online, and it seemed to be saying lice. But now this was all outside. This was an. I haven't found anything like that on the inside of my house. When also, and here's another thing. I'm just like another person that called while ago. The one you've been doing on TV right now. Um, mm -hmm. I can wash my clothes in as hot a water as I can get to go in my washing machine. I can dry them for 45 minutes in my dryer. I can take them out and I can hold them over my a dark brown chair, and I can spray them with uh, alcohol, and stuff will flake off of my clothes. Hmm. My, maybe so it's... I, my thing is they're not. It's not that whatever I'm doing in there. It's not killing the bed. It's not ever killing whatever this is. Whether those are bed bugs or whether that is, it, they're staying in my clothes. Well, it when doesn't. I, it I doesn't bed sound bugs. like bed bugs at all. It really doesn't because alcohol will kill bed bugs. Um, it's people have burned their house down because alcohol kills bed bugs. But oh, I, and alcohol is flammable. I do it like outside. But know, I'm saying if you're spraying your clothes with them. alcohol, it will kill them dead. They will die, and they won't live through that. And so but I don't, I'm saying when that when it's clean, why would it? Why would all this stuff shell out of the shirt? Yeah, that's something that's I'm not sure. Dry. That's something. That, I mean, it could be something that's in your detergent. It could be 
residual from your detergent too because I know detergents do leave a residue behind. I actually used to make soap years ago and it would get residue in your clothes from the soap and stuff you would use to clean your clothes with because I used to make homemade lye soap and then I would shave the soap and we would make detergent with it and sometimes you get residue and it would come out with other things. So it could be something like that. But I don't know. I mean, some without being there, it's hard to say. It. Yeah, without being there, it's really hard for me to tell you. But the, this, it and sounds I, like residue from soap. That's what it sounds like. Because if it looks like dried egg, that's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like residue from but soap. But I mean, like I, my sheets, literally, I was getting ate up by something that was in my sheets. And it, it wasn't something you could see. Hmm. And, and my that's lice. lice. Yeah, that sounds like lice. And lice can live all over your body. They can live all over your body. There's, there's head lice, there's body lice, there's pubic lice, there's, there's all kinds of lice. And then there's mites that will also live on you, like uh, chiggers and uh, scabies, their type of mite. They can live on you, and, so, and they, you can't see them either. And so they'll bite you, and they'll drive you crazy. And like I said, the only way you can really get rid of them is to go to a doctor. You've got to go to a doctor. Well, the doctor can prescribe the medication you need. Yeah, and it's cheaper than going crazy. I mean, I mean going crazy over well, bugs, yeah, I mean, they'll drive I mean, you crazy. I mean, I know I have the bed bugs because I get bit in the middle of the night, just like right. the regular. Well, lice like will do that too. They'll bite you in the middle of the night yeah. too. Well, I, I mean, now some of the things that I find in the house are brown bugs, and I don't think yeah, lice those are bed bugs. Brown. Yeah, lice aren't brown; they're so like grayish white. Two things is what the problem is because I get bit in the day by something, and then I get bit at night by bed bugs, and I can't get rid. You know, the bed bugs haven't had enough time really to be completely gone. I'm sure right. I'm finding a lot of dead ones, so I know it's doing some good. Right, right. And I'm thrilled to, that that's that's the right product. That's something product that I can spray with. I paid the first treatment was $660 and the second treatment was uh, they did seven days later was 330 so I've already been out over a thousand dollars wow that's high. <laughs> that's high that's a lot and then you know and now and then you I found out about that first and I even bought some crossfire but I didn't have the and I have two bottles of it that I guess I'll try to sell to somebody else because I just don't want to get the tank and all you know a 70 year old woman working with equipment like that I'm just intimidated I understand but that Harris is already pre-mixed, so you can use that, too. You can mix in the Harris bottle, too. Once you use it up, you can still use that bottle to mix Crossfire in it, too. So, And that, so and that's where you do uh, half up. You do so much in there, then you put the Crossfire in there, shake it up real good. That's right. Finish to the top, and then shake it up. That's okay. right. That's right. You got okay. it. Okay. All right. Well, you have a good well, night. Thank you very much. I appreciate you calling all the way from Texas. <laughs> okay. Well, I appreciate you've helped me out because I haven't known anywhere else to turn to. I've paid money and everything else, and nothing's working. So I'll go to the doctor and see All righty. Thank you very much. You have a good night. Okay. Appreciate you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm going to have to use the bathroom again. <laughs> Let's play a song if I can get it to work.
I am sorry about the bots. I do not have my admin tonight or my mod or whatever. And if I gotta run, I gotta run. I can't help myself. So, oh, let's see here. I have a strange question recently. I've started not reacting to mosquito bites like I used to. They're well, you'll get used to by bug bites. If you get bit a lot, your body will kind of get used to it. and They'll be like, okay, we can handle this. We're not going to send as much histamine to that spot, and you won't have the same reaction. So it is common to uh, have mild reactions from bites you get bitten. Like fleas, fleas will do that. You'll get bit by them, and you'll stop reacting. Let's see. Went from small infestation to an ongoing allergic reaction to my laundry detergent for nine months. Glad to have gotten rid of the bed bugs early on. Appreciate your help. My nose is itching. I think I need to trim my mustache because usually when my mustache gets long, the hairs curl up. I am not picking my nose. I am scratching my nose. I am not picking my nose. Just so you know. I don't want people to get, he's picking his nose. I'm not doing that. My, my mustache curls up. It gets curly and it itches inside my nose. That's what's going on. Don't want people to think I'm picking my nose or nothing. Uh, and I agree. Detergent change will help. Um, we had to throw away a new sofa because of bed bugs. I sprayed the bottom. Crossfire. Sprayed the whole house. Two weeks later, it was eat up with them again. It sounds like you're. Um, they're hatching out. That's what it sounds like to me. I uh, love this YouTube channel. Well, hey, Beth, thank you. Took me six months to get rid of them. That's the thing about bed bugs. If you um, if you're doing it yourself, it can take longer to get rid of bed bugs. Um, what vacuum would you recommend for a bed bug service? Something with that's enclosed that you can throw away with a vacuum bag. So I would use something with a bag definitely that you could throw away. And I would not throw it away in the house. I would throw the wet bag away. If you do throw it away in the house, take the bag out of the trash, take it outside, put it in the trash can. Don't leave it in the house. Can you recommend something other than Crossfire? Um, it's not allowed for New York. Um, Harris, if you can get that Harris five minutes. So if you go to my Amazon page and you look at bed bugs. All right, so I've got fleas and bed bugs and all this stuff here. But if you scroll down, I actually have, I thought I had a bed bug. There we go. Right here. Bed bugs for New York and Canada. All right. The reason I have this spot right here is because Canadians and New Yorkers can't buy Crossfire. There are other states now in the Union where Crossfire is restricted, and you can't buy it there either. But this is this is for you guys. So if you click this page, and you'll get the five minute. Now that's what she was just talking about on the phone. If y'all were listening to that Texan that called, that was talking about this five minute bed bug killer. This is Crossfire. It's the same thing. So if you can order this and get this shipped to you in either New York or Canada, this is what I would recommend you use if you cannot get Crossfire. This is the same thing. The problem with this, and the reason I don't recommend this for people who live um, you know, in the States, if you can get Crossfire, you need to get Crossfire because this is mixed and sitting on a shelf. So who knows how long this has been sitting on a shelf before it comes to your house, before you're able to use it in your house. So that's why I tell people not to use this, that you're better off using something like Crossfire because you know Crossfire is fresh. It's fresh. It was mixed today. Use it today. This was mixed who knows how many months or weeks ago, and it's been sitting on a shelf separating, and they may even add ingredients to it to keep it from separating, which may cause the problem with the product not to work as well. In fact, let's go to this product. And let's read some reviews. It's got really high marks, so so that's that's good. That's good. All right. Let's see. Let's look at these ratings here. Um, it says there's a five star product works, but okay. First off, regardless of what other reviewers say about this product, is the best they're available to kill bed bugs. If the following trend continues soon, they will only it will be the only insecticide we'll have is water. <laughs> However, that said, release bed bugs are adaptable to too hard to kill. Weaker products just make them mad. 
However, you will need repeat treatment. So this this is talking about how you need to use it. You need to treat over and over. This is 2020 too. This is August 2020. That's when that product was done. So let's go to most recent. Uh, see, there we go. August 16th. This was two days ago. And he gave it five stars. This guy says it's garbage. And this was August 16th as well. Said it's absolute garbage. So he may have got an older batch. So that's the thing. You got a three star here. Good stuff, but the sprayer attachment was totally non-functional. That's one of the problems I have with these these little bottles like this where they got these weird little attachments that they don't always work very well. Um, this is a five star, July 24th. July 24th, both two five star reviews. Here's a one star that was done on July 6th. Followed directions faithfully for two months and problem only got much worse. So this didn't work at all for them. So like I said, you get mixed reviews. Overall, it's got, like I said, four and a half stars. Um, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Some people are having good results. Some people aren't. It, but that's that's the best that I've got for you. That's, that's, um, that's all I can tell you. I don't live in New York. I don't know what they're allowed to use in New York or Canada for that matter. And so I'm just trying to do the best I can to explain to you what to use. I've been treating a lot of things... I've been reading a lot of things about these bed bugs and hmm, a high heat steamer will kill them. Some people have got rid of them just using steamers. I don't know if that's true or not either. Um, I meant to say I heard, yeah, I understand. I understand. Uh, I was stationed in Louisiana and never got used to mosquito bites. <laughs> yeah, they're bad down there too. So yeah, Kenji's pretty cool. I like Kenji. Coming in here, giving me all kind of money. Oh, Kenju's always here. He's religious, religious. I'm. I, he says I'm his. Um, I'm his uh, weekly. What is it? The weekly dose of of uh, of therapy. I'm like a therapist <laughs> for bed bug problems. So. There's 29 people watching. There's 24 likes. If you haven't liked the video, then please, by all means, give me a thumbs up if you can. I really appreciate it. It helps. It helps further the channel. I don't do a lot. I don't advertise my channel on YouTube. I just have people that come and hang out and talk with me. And the 20, I've got almost 25,000 subscribers, um, and it's pretty cool. I never thought I'd have this many people watching me on YouTube just talking about bugs, but Larry says I've had one treatment already. Still have bed bugs. Treatment two is set for third Tuesday. Uh, what have you been using, Larry? What's the chemical? Um, GM says, any idea how to keep frogs and lizards away from the home? Yeah. But people don't like it. People don't like it. When you tell them how to get rid of lizards and frogs, um, they don't like it. So... The main way that I know, now I don't do this personally myself because I don't, but I have had people that have used glue boards, and by glue boards, let me show you. These. These type right here. These little glue boards like this. And they're actually, I think I've got them on my Amazon, but yep, there they are. For cockroaches, I've had people take these things right here and slip them in beside a door where lizards and frogs come in and they'll get caught. They die. They get caught on there, they die. Now you can, you can take them if you get a lizard or a frog caught on this glue board and you could take it outside and you could put vegetable oil on it and they'll come off and they'll be able to get away. And that's what I recommend. I don't recommend torturing an animal and killing it and letting it die on one of these things. I don't agree with it. That's why I don't do it. But, you know, to each their own. They're not illegal. It's absolutely legal to do that if you want to do that. But that's what I recommend people use because that's the only thing I know that works. Can't use pesticides. Pesticides aren't going to kill lizards and frogs. So they don't really make anything like a poison or something like that that's going to kill lizards and frogs. And so that's the only thing I know. You could, you could put sweeps on doors. Um, you could go and put extra sweeps and stuff on your door. If maybe it doesn't go all the way to the ground, uh, you could do something like that to try to keep them out. But still, sometimes they can still get in, and that's what I know people have done. But I do recommend lib releasing it. I don't recommend, you know, torturing an animal to death. That's not, I mean, I'm an exterminator. I kill things for a living. 
but I don't want to torture an animal to death. That's not my the way I do anything. So, um, let's see. Pest control companies in this area usually charge around a thousand dollars a room to heat, treat, and kill bed bugs, and I think that's too high. I think any amount of money is too high for something that doesn't work. Um, yeah, Beth, Beth, Beth said, beat me to it. Heat treatment do not work. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Beth. Beth, heat treatments do not work. Um, I've been behind so many failed heat treatments. Now, I've, the very first video I ever did on YouTube, if you go to my videos and you look here at uploads and you go to uh, all li all videos, will it show me the, li the, the longest one? I guess it won't. I guess, let's see. Let's go home and popular uploads there we go there's my there's my oldest video right there it's my most popular upload crazy 203,000 views crazy why heat treatments don't work on bed bugs so the reason a heat treatment doesn't work on bed bugs is because bed bugs will they lay eggs in tight areas so they they have this desire to burrow in to places so one of the places you'll find them, on your mattress, for example, is inside the tufts and the folds around the corners of the mattress. The reason you find them there is because they like to squeeze into little holes and cracks and crevices. So if they get down on the floor, they will squeeze between the holes, between like your baseboard. They will go in your sheetrock. They will get behind your uh, outlet covers, and they will get into the wall. And once they're in the wall, they can get into your insulation and lay eggs there. They do this. Roaches do this. Bed bugs do this. All right, if they are in the insulation of your wall behind a piece of sheetrock and you go in and you use a heat machine, the heat will not penetrate the insulation. If your RF factor is high enough, it will not allow for the heat to penetrate through the wall to kill the bed bugs in the wall. They will live there. And so you may kill 98% of the problem, but the problem is, is that 2% that's still alive is in the wall, living in the wall, waiting for the heat to turn off. When it does, they come out, they bite you, and they don't die. So, and then they just reinfest. It may take them a couple months to reinfest. And by then, your warranty's out, and they'll be like, oh, no, you just reinfested your house. When really, the infestation was never gone to begin with. This is the biggest problem I run into with heat treatments. Heat machines are very expensive. And the fact that it doesn't work, there's such a huge margin of error in using a heat machine. I don't do it. I don't do it. I'd rather go behind exterminators that do heat treatments and they fail and, and show how it can be done correctly, uh, inexpensively and correctly. Because if you're using a pesticide and you're going in and spraying pesticides, pesticides are a lot cheaper than a $10,000, dollars $40,000 piece of equipment that's not going to work. And so I don't do heat and I don't recommend that exterminators do heat. I think it's too much liability. I've got images, I've got videos on my channel, you can go and you can watch them, of damage that was actually done to homes with heat treatments. I do not recommend a heat treatment ever. It is really bad for your house, it is not very effective, and you're just going to cause yourself more headache and you're going to be out a lot of money. And so I don't recommend it. Crossfire works, Al uh, Alpine WSG, that even works on bed bugs. There are other options out there. You do not have to use a heat machine. You do not have to spend thousands of dollars to get rid of something that shouldn't cost that much to get rid of. So, um, oh, good luck, Beth. Thank you for stopping by tonight. She got to go charge her phone. Uh, my cat usually catches lizards when they come under the door. There you go. There you go. Let the cat kill them. So I showed this when I was on the phone earlier, but this I haven't gotten a chance to eat it yet. But this is a cinnamon and sugar toast, and it's homemade bread. See, my wife makes homemade bread. My wife, so let me tell you, now most people who are here and hang out with me every Thursday night know my wife. My wife is Alicia. She is my better half. She is the best thing that's ever happened to me my whole life. She grinds her own wheat. She sits in there with a mortar and pestle, and she grinds the wheat berries into flour. I'm just kidding. She actually has a mill that she puts it in and it grinds it between two stones. And she makes her own wheat flour. She, she's she got a sourdough in there. She makes sourdough bread. She's got a sourdough starter, so she makes sourdough bread. She grinds her own wheat flour. She makes sandwich bread for me for my lunches in the day. And then she gets and makes these really good little cinnamon and sugar. Is this you or was this Rory? Yeah, this is Alicia made this for me. I knew this was Alicia. 
and it's crispy. See, watch. See that? Look at that. That's like a piece of candy. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's like it makes these hard little sugary delicious things. So if you've ever had like a a cinnamon and sugar toast, that's like the best thing in the world on fresh homemade bread. She's the best. I love my wife. She's the best. So, anyway, I brag. Talk about how amazing my wife is and how perfect she is. Let's see. Colts fan. Treated my two-bedroom apartment and car six weeks ago with Crossfire. Again, two weeks ago. A lot less bites, but still getting a few. Going to treat again tomorrow. Not bringing any in that I know of. What else can I do? It sounds like you're doing right. It sounds like you're, you've got them. It really does. You've got less than you had before. And it may just take an extra treatment or two to get rid of them, but it sounds like you're 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 getting rid of them. Kenju, I remember talking to Kenju. I remember when Kenju had bed bugs. I remember when we were talking back and forth, and he was fighting his bed bugs, and he went even through a period, if he doesn't mind me saying, uh, of paranoia, where he was so scared that he was going to continue to have bed bugs even after they were already dead, and it really affected him. But it took him several months to get rid of the bed bugs. But he got rid of them on his own. And he's a member of my channel. And in case you're wondering, I do offer membership. If you go to my channel and you go up to the top and you click the join button, you can actually join my channel. And what I do is I have... Oh, let me, let me show you this. So I've got a community tab right here where you can chat. You can talk to me. I've got a Discord. You can join the Discord. Discord link's below. But anyway, what I do is I have... Now, you can't see it here because I'm not logged in. But there are actual posts here you can't see because they're for members only. And I have a um, I have a course on how to kill bed bugs. And if you go in channel. to my channel here and you click sales, this is the video you're watching right now. So this is my live video. There's a chat right there. There's Kenji right here. Hey Kenji. See, he says, feel free to say all you want. Alright? So if you go down here and you click more right here and you scroll down, I have a course which is right here. Okay, you can go there, and it's like fifteen dollars. See, fifteen dollars. It's a it's a course. It's thirty six minutes. It shows how to. And I talked about it earlier tonight. It shows how to get rid of bed bugs. All right. Now I don't do self promotion hardly ever. I really don't, cause I just I don't. But if you join, <coughs> I'm giving away a hundred free courses in my community channel, and it's five dollars to join. So it's fifteen dollars if you want to buy the course. It's five dollars if you want to join, and you get it for free. So I give away free stuff. I like to give away free stuff. And I've got books I've written on bed bugs. I give them away free all the time. And so if I ever post anything like that, I do it in the community tab under members only. So I haven't started members only streams, but I've considered doing members only live streams. So you guys can come in and just we can just kind of hang out and chill. It won't be so many people scrolling by and I can answer questions more better and we can talk stuff. But anyway, that's just, see, look at that. Look at that. That's a piece of, that's like candy. That's like amazing, amazing candy. That's just amazing. I don't know if you can hear it. You probably can't hear that. I can do like some ASMR up on the mic. I'm going to pull the mic in here. And I can go like, do you hear that? Like that. I can just crunch candy. So. <laughs> That's the new weird thing people do on the internet is ASMR. Anyway. Well, I've been chatting for like almost two hours. Things are winding down for the night. <coughs> I think I'm going to hit the hay, get off of here, get some sleep. Because uh, i got to be up really early tomorrow. I told a guy I'd be at his house at 7 a.m. to kill some European hornets. So, I am going to get off of here. Hey, Ty. Yeah, Ty's another member. I'm really surprised. I went and looked at my members the other night, and I was like, I got three people as members. I was like, that's pretty cool. I didn't think anybody would want to be a member, except maybe Kenju, because Kenju's always here. But I've got several members now. It's pretty neat. And so, like I said, if you want to join, join. Join and hang out and get some some perks. I don't have a lot of perks. I don't I don't really know what people want. If you tell me what you want, I'll know, and I'll, I'll do it. I'll hang out for about five more minutes for you, Ty, since you showed up late. If you want to ask a question, you go right ahead and ask me. I'll be here. I'm going to, say, I'm going to stick around because you just showed up and you were late, but you're my other member and I don't mind sticking around for you if you want me to answer any questions for you.
But I'm gonna eat this cinnamon toast crunch thing, whatever, because it was a present that was made for me by my beautiful wife, and I appreciate it. But it's not hot anymore, but it's still really delicious. And it's very sweet and delicious. I don't want to talk with my mouth full because that's rude. But, all right, Ty. Well, you have a good night. I appreciate it. If you have fleas on your dog, you need to bathe your dog and treat them with some flea, from, flea, flea chemical for pets. So, but I don't do that because I'm not a vet. But y'all have a good night. I appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Y'all have a good night. Let me see if I can find my little thing. I see closing the stream. See, thank you for coming. You can tell I'm closing the stream because it says thank you for coming. Y'all have a good night.